Hey everybody, this is Jerry. We do a demonstration of an iron palm break. Well, we'll see what happens. Very thin palm break. Insights, my thoughts on iron palm breaking, uh, who I am, what I am, what I'm doing, what the reason is for behind it. Uh, most of you have seen the, the video that was reposted recently. It was actually four months after I started dedicating myself to the art of breaking. Um, I put the video up of my journey so far, and there were some pretty cool, impressive breaks in there. Some weren't really breaking, breaking because uh, when you break a bottle, it's really the percussive force of air shoving through the water or in the break, but that's still breaking. I consider that more of a beginning level break anyway, but that's beside the point. My name is Jerry Lever, as I said. I have, I was promoted to Shodan in Matsubayashi Ru, Karate Do, back in 2006. Uh, due to life issues and whatnot, I haven't been able to practice the dojo. And uh, so therefore, I'm still Shodan. That's fine by me, because um, I'm learning more and more that the other belt ranks are great, but it all comes down to how much you live it, and how much you learn it, and how much you're willing to just keep driving forward. I may not be the greatest, most masterful adept out there at Karate Do, but I know a lot of stuff. So, I feel that I've grown a lot since 2006. Uh, the reason I got into the breaking journey was, um, I was overweight, out of shape, wasn't able to go to the dojo, um, and I was feeling sorry for myself. And one day, August of, let's see, 2012, August 2012, I was walking in my room and on my wall, so as I walk in, the other side of the room is mine. On the wall to the left wall, back wall, I have my Matsubayashi certification, but on the forward wall, I had a smaller one from my days in uh, Mu Hing's 18 Dallas Poems Kung Fu, in which I have a certificate that allows me to teach um, several forms and also iron palm conditioning for a level one coconut break. And I realized, oh my gosh, I can do a martial workout at home, out of shape, and still have that connection, that, that uh, spiritual connection in a way to the essence of true karate. Um, I've never been a believer that there isn't hard conditioning in karate though, that it is essential to be a part of it. I've always believed in the few things I've gleaned through studies on my own, that um, the old karate practitioners, Makiwara, that is an iron palm or iron hand device. That is a device to condition the body to punch harder and stronger. Every time you strike that thing over and over again, it's teaching the same things as does hitting a rice bag or a, or a rock or a tree. Uh, your body becomes stronger over time through conditioning over and over and over again. So I knew that it was missing today's karate a lot. So on my own, as we're doing this breaking journey, I got online and I saw some breakers and some things I've never done before because even for my black belt test I never broke a reinforced co concrete patio slab, the 8 by 2 by 16 that you see me do a lot of. Um, that's standard for most schools, whether it's Taekwondo, Kung Fu, Karate, that tends to be the material you use for the first degree black belt test is you got to break one of those with a palm, heel, fist, something. Um, so, having never done it, I thought maybe I should try. I got my level one coconut break, break back within a month of starting. I was very happy about that because that was that was my pride. I had worked really hard to achieve that, and that's still a hit or miss thing today because that coconuts aren't consistent. But um, so I got back to the breaking and got on YouTube, and I met two guys. I met Brett Barrel out of uh, he's from South Africa, but he's living in England, and um, he he's just a cool nut. I mean, he is almost like 
the white shaman monks, uh, he kind of trained himself backwards like I did. He was looking for the roots of the old stuff, and he got across. He came across iron palm, iron body training, and the man can stand on his head, which just bothers me. But it's cool that he can do it. Um, stand on his head without his hands, hands to his side, feet straight up. Anyway, um, so I got in touch with him, saw him breaking some stuff. And I got in touch with Lee Shiloh out of Canada. Um, Master Shiloh is, to me, phenomenal. Um, I'm honored to now, the other certificate that I have now is, um, I have the Matsubayashi Shodan, I have the Mewhin's 18,000 Palm teaching certificate for certain things, including Iron Palm, but I also have an instructor cert under uh, Master Shiloh to teach Diamond Palm, which is his method of breaking. And it's a functional, uh, fantastic way for the art form to be done. Uh, the mechanics are just so simple, it's ridiculous. And uh, he developed it his way, and he put it out there. And uh, It's an honor to be a part of that. So, um, you got to know him. He's, he's ridiculous to the point that he takes a brick in his hand in one of his videos, and um, he taps it to let you see his reel, and he goes, <coughs> and the top half falls off. It's just really cool, but he's been doing Iron Palm probably longer than I've been alive. So I hope that when I'm 60, 70 years old, I can do cool stuff like that. So, again, it was Karate Center Journey in which I wanted to... The one-hit stopping punch or power, the, the one-hit, one-kill punch thing, Ikin Hisatsu, I think it's called. Um, I believe that something like that was out there, not that you're going to kill somebody, but that you could produce maximum force from the shortest distance. And that's why I put in front of this video, that little video of my breaking that I just did today, um, it is short power. Think of all the karate breaks you see people do like that. They do not drop from a few inches. They drop from, you know, a good two feet, three feet, and drive their body into it. Um, my, mine is the focus of I know how to move my body to hit and kick. I know how to use my hips for that, but to condition my hands to do the quick drop like that, imagine, just imagine what might happen if you could break like that and then you have to hit somebody with that hand that's been conditioned for that break and you get to wind up for it and throw your hip into it. With breaking you don't have all that. You just don't. You don't have that wind up lead off like you're throwing a, a ball. But imagine if your hands were conditioned and you did hit somebody like that. It would be probably devastating. I don't ever want to find out. But the art of breaking um, infected a part of me. It became part of who I am. I, I, I love the art of breaking. I love breaking. I, I, believed, I used to not believe breaking was a part of a martial way. But uh, Master, Grandmaster Ed Parker I saw a video of his on YouTube where he talked about why in competitions and demonstrations you break boards. And he said that it's to show the intention, the power, and the focus you have without hurting someone else. And uh, I'm paraphrasing, but it's basically the gist of it. I thought that was phenomenal because it's true. If you can break the boards or the bricks, that takes the proper coordination, proper timing, proper keyme or focus. And if you do that, imagine if you put that into action forward, hitting someone. Same focus, same action, same everything. It's devastating. So you don't want to hurt somebody you're, you're working out with or even um, sparring with or fighting with in a tournament. Although I think a lot of tournaments are too aggressive. That's just me. Um, so I, I got into it and I wanted to make it my own. Started a Facebook page for different reasons, but I want to showcase also my training, my 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 lower levels of breaking in the beginning, but also for karate conversation discussion. That wasn't going the way I wanted it to go, and uh, just didn't happen at all. So I renamed it, and I chose Kata Tetsute, which is empty iron hand. I thought it was perfect. So. I started doing the page, and along the way up till now, it's been a wonderful journey. I've got some really good support from really good people. Now, the the training itself is not difficult. The training itself is um, consistent. 
It's like any martial training. Kata, you have to do it over and over and over to get it right. Uh, to apply the kata, the bunkai, you got to have somebody with you to practice, practice, practice. I wish I had that, but I don't. Um, but I still practice my kata, and in my head I'm engaged all the time with thinking how it might work. Um, the purpose for me in breaking is to learn how my body functions to drive force and power. If you look at my breaks, hitting one slab with a thicker foam look than I did, I did a real thin one today. I, I looked for a towel, a small I towel had with the, the thinner foam look. And uh, if you look at the difference in how I broke before, I used to come up really high and down, or from here and down. And now I can do it in a space of, you know, three inches. Um, next step that I'm learning from, uh, from Master Shiloh is to have my hand just on top of it and, and break through it. Um, it's kind of a push strike, but it's not really pushing, it's more striking. And um, once I get that, I'll just be tickled. But anyway, um, the body mechanics involved in punching, whether it be reverse punch or whatnot, it's all oblique torque and abdominal crunch, oblique crunch, whatever you want to call it. There's a function of uh, twisting that happens. You can see it in the hand when you punch, the fist rolls over. We, we're taught chamber up, fist, uh, fingers pointing up, and as you punch and you make contact, you rotate over. And that is an oblique torque. Oblique meaning side turning, basically. I'm not going to go into technical, technical, but think of it as twisting. Your obliques are on the side, and those muscles wrap to allow you to twist. There's also a crunching. That as my hand turns, I pull it down. Same thing happens in the rib cage. As you're striking, you're opening your ribs, and you come down. There's a tightening. I don't go into the mystical thing with the chi and all that stuff, but I will say that the center focuses of Don Tian matter uh, as a, a focus point for the pull down and the twist. Um, I use the breaking as a study to learn how to make my body work better. I actually consider every video I put up as a journal that I can refer back to and look at what I'm doing to correct the technique and make it better the next time. That's kind of my, pro my process. Um, okay, let's go into training. Feel free to check out my, my page, Kata Tetsute. Also, my YouTube page, JT Leverett, and that's on YouTube. And um, you're going to find a lot of videos of instruction and stuff there, me demonstrating the bag. I'm not going to do that here. Uh, but I will say this whether you go with the four month regimen I do, or I did, or the way I do it now, I kind of treat, I have several things I use to train with, and I treat it like a, um, like a cross trainer. I don't want to do just the one thing over and over again, I want to mix it up, keep my hands constantly changing, constantly uh, having to adapt. You know, you hit one material, uh, like rice. Rice is a very good bag because it lets you feed through. Hit rice and you only hit rice, your hand reacts to it a certain way, but hit rice today, hit rice tomorrow, hit rice the next day, and hit sand. Um, your hand then has to adapt to that change. You stay with sand for a while and you go to wood chip. We'll stick with the four, four bag month thing. And, um, and it doesn't matter what material you get, there's a couple of standard rules. Number one, um, go easy. If you've never done it before, you shouldn't be striking hard at all. You should be light, lightly tapping it. Um, Brett Barrel Sifu says that, um, and he's right, that even light taps on the object, just lightly tapping, is enough. You just do hundreds and hundreds of them. And it's the same thing. If you do that every day, uh, your bones will remodel and change and, and develop. Your hands will adapt. And those little bitty things, those percussive moments, I hit here, it actually travels up into my arm and into my spine. And my body then gets used to it. It gets trained to resist the negative impact force, which is very, very important. My suggestion is, um, if you're interested, Message me or find somebody you think is really neat in their style and ask them questions on how they train. Um, this video would be excessively long if I did a, a video like that. This is going to be long enough as it is. Um, doesn't matter the material you use, 
as long as it develops the quality you're looking for. Uh, some things to watch out for. If you're not using Dit Don Jiao, you're not training right, is how I see it. Uh, without Dit Don Jiao, your body will heal, but you may deform your hand. Uh, now, there are some schools of thought in the Chinese traditions that use a Jiao, but they want to deform their hands. They want their hands that thick. Uh, because that thick, it's a, the bones are impervious to everything. Um, <laughs> slap it, it's going to break. Uh, I don't believe you need to be effective by having a deformed hand. I don't. But it's all trade-offs. Um, you want to avoid injury, but you're going to create injury in the training. That's just training. So the Dit Dot Jiao is going to heal things very fast, and I swear by it. It's fantastic stuff. Heals very, very quickly. And uh, I've seen large, gigantic black bruises in two days gone. Tenderness is still there, but it allows the body to flush out the bad, pulled up blood, and just keep the area vascular and healing properly. Because if the area is open and vascular, then the good blood is bringing in the things the body needs to heal and getting rid of all the trash and junk. That's the best way to think about it. So Jiao allows you to do that. So first and foremost, you must have Jiao. If you don't have it, there's plenty of resources on the internet. Just look them up. Um, you can ask me. I have uh, particular types, particular people that I will contact and ask about Jiao, and uh, I don't mind sharing that with you personally. So, you get your material you want to strike with, you get your Jiao. There is debate in the world as whether you need to be internal or external. External is the way I do it, with a little bit of internal. I do a little bit of meditation. I use Kata as meditation also to get the blood flowing. Um, internal arts, they do a lot of meditation, a lot of visualization, and they also condition their hands. You cannot have an effective iron palm strike without physically hitting something. Even your own hand. Like if I want to train Seriuto and I want to practice, that constant over and over and over again is doing two things. The bone's hitting bone, so I'm shocking this. But I'm also shocking this, so I'm training both. And believe it or not, this, over time, will equate to a really good slap and a really good seriuto. Um, it's just the way it works. So, what can I get into? There are hazards involved, but there are trade-offs. Again, like the hand thing. What do you want out of it? If you don't mind your hand not bending, there's some ways out there that you can beef up your hand, beat it up to death to the point that uh, your hand will be like barely able to move, but you know what? If you're good with that, it's fine. I just don't. I don't buy into that one. I'm a firm believer in being honest. You will never see me do a break in which I've lied about the break. If there are hairline fractures in something, and I decide to put the video out there, most time I will not. Um, but if I do. I will either put the bottom of the video and edit it saying there were small cracks in this already, blah, 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 or I will say it out loud in the video. I also believe that when you present it, um, you should be very honest. And uh, I guess that's something I share about who you get your information from. If you're getting your information from people that are all about money, that's not good. My my instructor, Master Shiloh, and I both write ebooks. Ebooks are pretty cheap. Uh, Master Shiloh, with his knowledge, is willing to teach anybody. The only requirement he has is purchase his ebooks and my ebooks. And the reason for that is they're kind of like it's kind of like having your uh, study manual for the test. Um, it's all the guidelines and principles of the system of diamond palm breaking, and allows you to have that. So that's a good approach. But he's not asking for monthly fees. He's not asking for dues. He's done any of that. Now, if you want to get a certificate in a break or certified to be an instructor in the system, his fee is so small it's ridiculous. Um, his point is he wants to share the knowledge of what he's developed with other people. I'm the same way. I want people to, to love the art of breaking as much as I do. I want them to, to put their hand through something and go, wow, that was easy. Or, man, that was awesome, which to me is the same thing. Um, so the, the quality of instructor, I think, should be based on whether he's asking for a lot of money or not. And if you're getting into a system that's very 
excuse you, mystical, that requires uh, excessive chi projection, meditation, stuff like that. There's a place for that. If you want that, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not putting it down. But there are some groups out there that that's their core. That's what they want. I don't think you have to go that route. I think it's a typical hojo undo. And if you use the right liniment and you train it each day, um, it's like anything. You're going to get better at it. Um, Ryan Parker Shin, she made a comment one time. He was asking me some things about my journey. and um, He said, I take it you've made some really quick gains uh, in your training. Yes, I have. Now, I'm not keeping them as secrets. I just believe certain things. You know, if you're really interested, you should show some effort. If you've never done Iron Palm before and you want to know the, the cheat way, there's no cheat way. Show me what you're able to do first. The way I was taught Iron Palm, take a 30 pound roller bar. It's a lead pipe with lead shot in it. When you move it, it's alive. It, the lead shot rolls and tumbles. And you put it on your forearm and you roll forward and back. You do that 50 times a day for the rest of your life. We had to do that for two weeks first before we could train the, the bags. Purpose for this was the instructor said, you know, I'm giving you deals on stuff I'm sharing with you. I want to see your dedication first. I'm not that harsh. I don't think you have to do that, especially if you're already in a martial art where you condition your forearms and such. That's not necessary. Um, I will say that all breaking is scientific. Um, there's science behind it. The effective force you're putting into it creates the shock. The shock then breaks the object. Uh, you can select how that shock goes through by the way you strike it, and the way you finesse it. Um, so, do I think it's magical chi? No. Do I think it's energy? Yes. Um, impact, explosions, it's all energy. So, we're talking about the same thing. It's the old way they discussed it as a mystical thing you can project and make happen. Uh, I'm saying it's science. It happens. If I hit you in the shin with a stick, you're going to have a reaction of pain. It's going to hurt. It's going to bruise. All this is going to happen. It's not that I took my internal energy and put it through the stick and that's what made the bruise. No. Me hitting you with a physical stick made the bruise. Uh, now, it took my energy to motivate that stick. And my intention and purpose in my mind was to follow through. And I think that's what Qi really is, is the intention and purpose along with the physical action. I think it's the, the Qi is really a, a conglomeration of all that packed together. This sounds like a, a talk about Qi, but it's not. What else can I share with you? Um, there are specific ways to do the break. And the way I do it, I, I do a combination of iron palm and diamond palm methods. Um, I love both. Iron palm is more the, I'm on the street, I'm going to hit you like this. Diamond palm is more of a focus on your body mechanics and, and drop into it. And then you can translate those concepts into practical stuff later if you need to. Um, hope this is a good intro. Please let me know if there's any more information you want to know from me. It's better if I have a guideline to go by. Uh, I've done videos before so you can see those. Uh, if you want to look them up or if you want me to do a new series, that's fine. Let me know. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little informative, boring session. Um, lots of ums. But uh, I do love the art of breaking. And uh, real quick to clarify something. I don't care how big and bad you are breaking concrete with your bare hand. I think it's stupid. Now, the ultimate goal even in Diamond Palm is to strike flat palm on a, a bare empty, a bare um, piece of concrete and break it. That's the ultimate goal. But there is no reason you have to do that when you're doing the art of breaking. Here's my thought. If I'm hitting someone, and I've hit people before, there's not a single part of human body that's as rough and rigid and tears your skin like concrete. Even a friend of mine, he, he was punching a dude in the face and he gouged his finger. That's still not the same. 
So with about an inch and a half to two inch bone book, you can look at parts of the body with muscle cover before the bone, muscle tendon fat, parts of the body that got a good inch and a half, two inches of, of depth before you hit bone. And if you consider the art of breaking about breaking the hard object, then you've got it. You've got that, that soft reflexive material that, and it doesn't encourage chi. It actually makes the break a little harder to hit the foam book, but it makes it easier in the sense that you have more confidence in what you're doing. You know you're not going to hit the concrete, so you know you're not going to mess your hand up. You know the foam book can take abuse and you can do it without killing your hand, so it allows you to commit that little extra power into it. Um, to me, that's more lifelike, more practical. That's why I use towels, that's why I use books, especially when you're doing levels of three and higher, you're looking at a different level of, of impact. Three or more, please use a two inch book or a one three quarters until you're good at anything because it's difficult. You'll hurt yourself. Now, although I'm a karateka, um, starting again. Now the issue of how to set up your stacks. I have a few videos of me doing karate breaks. I go up to four with spacers. I use the uh, carpenter's pencils from Lowe's or Home Depot. Set them flat on their side so it gives a good half inch or so. It's, it's a good space. And uh, that's what I've used. I like the karate break. I just don't do that. I go for the kung fu break. I don't need to scream. I want to focus my energies on the action and the movement and the follow through without having to worry about screaming to get my power. Because a lot of that is what it is, it's, it's convicting yourself through the object by ah, getting the adrenaline pumping it and, and it's great. I love those breaks too, by the way, and there are people out there that are phenomenal um, at those breaks, but that's not me. Um, the way we do it is flat on flat. Basic concept, if nobody's ever thought of this before, not assuming anybody's ignorant. If I have them spaced, when I hit the top one with enough force to break it, and it breaks, it hits the next one. Now, I'm following through, so I'm, I'm hitting that, it breaks, and I'm helping it hit the next one, which then breaks and helps hit the next one. Now, if you don't follow through, you won't go through all of them. Some people stack. I tried five stack one time. And I broke the first three and the bottom two were still there. I'm like, ah, I'm crying. What it was is I didn't get my body to really go through it. I've done four though, went straight through all four. No problem. Again, using a phone book on top because there's no need to mess up your hand. You scratch your hand up with the concrete, means you can't train. It's that simple. You, you, you bust your hand up with, with concrete, you can't train. Um, I, I made a mistake in training one day, just playing around, which I shouldn't have done, and messed up my middle knuckle, so I couldn't do staking anymore. That's what I used. I had a piece of concrete, I was stupid, and it's been about two and a half months, and right now I'm rehabbing it back in now. Finally. It's taken about two and a half months for that rehab. So the art breaking should be about breaking. We stack ours so there's no chance that the impact I'm creating is a matter of that top one helping break the next one. Even if I hit the first time and the top one breaks, it, imagine this is all a piece across here, it breaks and separates even a little bit. So, still got to hit that material to get the next one to break. So, I prefer that method. I think it's a truer test of iron fall. Yes, the ultimate goal is to do it barehanded, but there's nothing in the world saying you have to. Uh, if your goal is never to do that, then don't do it. Be safe is, is the smartest thing. Follow those rules. Use Jow. Be consistently persistent. Train smart. And remember it's about the art of breaking not the art of breaking your hand. So I hope this helps a little bit. Give me some information, feedback you need. Uh, if you want another video 
on something in particular, like if you wanted me to get up with a block and talk you through the technique and stuff, that's fine too. Just let me know what you need. And uh, thank you very, very much.